Fist bump, say what's up to somebody around you as you make your way to your seats. But please help me welcome everyone joining online. What's up, online church? So good to see you. Sort of see you. We don't really see you. You see us, but we know we're so glad that you're here. Tuning in from Florida, from Pittsburgh, from Canada. Come on, somebody. We're all over the place. We're so glad that you're here with us. We are in a, a collection of talks, a series called Warrior. This is part two. Turn to your neighbor, tell him, I'm a warrior. All right, we got a little gusto this morning. Come on, somebody. Hey, we're talking about fighting the good fight, and uh, we kind of inadvertently landed at a, a sort of a theme scripture over these few weeks. It's found in Matthew chapter 28. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me, but it's gonna be on the screen. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 says, Jesus comes to them, meaning the disciples, says this, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Come on, he's holy. He says, therefore, go, right? We talked about the implications of the go last week. If you missed it, you can check that out. It says, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey not just something, but everything that I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age, the encouragement that we have, that God is with us. This is the call, church. This is the mandate from which we live by. This is the cause from the fight in which we fight for. Are you with me? This is why we do what we do. Last week we talked about, you know, kind of the vision of that, how we operate within the context of this as a church, about, you know, strengthening those of you who are here and, and reaching those who aren't in our heart for the world. And can we celebrate this morning? Last week we had our, our partner, One Child, our global partner who helps bring hope in hard places. We talked about being a champion for others, providing them hope and opportunity and what let them see what's possible, even though everything looks impossible. And last week, come on somebody, we celebrate that we had 73 children get champion last week. Praise God. Come on. It's amazing to see what we can do together. 73 kids who now have somebody who's on their side, championing them and raising up them in, in different ways in the Dominican Republic and Ethiopia. And so it's so amazing. And hey, if you're like, what are you talking about? I want to be a champion. Check out last week's message, but on our app, you can find a way that you can still be a part of that in the days to come as well and champion a child in those two countries, part of our hope centers there. But over the series, we talked about, uh, I'm gonna be sharing a little bit about some of the ministry partners that we have. And today, we're gonna share a little bit about our ministry partner, Harvest 912. If you drove in today or walked in, you're like, who put the bus right there? That's them, they're amazing. Harvest 912 was started by uh, some friends of ours, Kit and Tad Jakes, they got cool names. But they, uh, this ministry was birthed out of a, a passion and a burden that they experienced. And let that be a word for you this morning, is that whatever maybe is burning inside of you might just be the thing that God is calling you to actually step up and do about. And so Kit and Tad were driving not too far from here and they were at the stoplight and they saw a, a guy who was homeless and just something burned inside of them. They, they wait a second, I gotta do something. And so what did they do? They did something. They went and they provided this guy a brand, a brand new pair of boots and, and this amazing story. I encourage you to check that out. But their mission right now is providing foot care and for providing resource, uh, new boots, backpacks for the basic necessities and pointing them to the love of Jesus. And they said it themselves, that their outreach is truly about providing uh, dignity, respect, and hope for people who don't feel like they have any of it. And so that's what Harvest 912 is. That's what we are a part of as a church. Come on, it's amazing. As well as we partner with them. They also have, you go out there today, I don't know where they have it in the rain or not, but they have these bags. These are bags, you ever just driving maybe downtown or maybe even on the mall property and you're like, man, there's a guy who, you know, standing there with a sign, you know, anything helps and you're looking around and you're like, I got a pen, like that's all I got. That's not gonna be that helpful. Well, they have these bags that they created, these like kind of homeless bags that have snacks in them. They've got bottles of water, some bathing wipes, They've got a, a, a free load of laundry attached to it and some snacks. So if you're ever just like, man, I wish I had something to help, that's what these bags are for. So you can just be like, wait a second, I got something. Does anybody want something 
this morning that you want to help? Yeah, yeah, come on. This is yours. You're the first person, praise God, for you. So now you don't have an excuse. You have an opportunity. And that's with our partnership of Harvest 912. They're amazing ministry. Listen, I encourage you to go out there and just, just get a chance to see what it is. They, they need help in a lot of different ways from some volunteers. If you're in the medical profession, you definitely should go check that out, but kind of anybody as well. And listen, all serve opportunities. You can see the link on the screen if you're online or in the room. Anytime you wanna say like, how do I help into the city, the community? That's where you go. In fact, I'll even point you to a person, Gilson Lucas. She's got a name tag on. She's gonna be out there with the team. That's your go-to. Like if you're like, how do I serve with the mission? What about mission trips? What about blank, blank, blank? Anything in the community, she is your girl. That's who you need to talk to. She'll resource you and help connect you into serving and being a part of it. But hey, why don't we just take a moment right now? Let's pray for a blessing over Harvest 912. Father, we come before you and we just thank you, God, for an incredible ministry. God, that that is, is bringing uh, just hope right here in our community. And so, Father, we thank you for it. I pray for continued favor over them, God, and blessing of an abundance, God. Would you resource them with more resources than they don't even know what to do with, God? Would you multiply their impact? We thank you for them, and it's in Jesus' name. Everybody said a good amen and amen, amen. Amen. Awesome. Hey, let's um, dive in. It's important. You know, we share those things like, you know, ministry partners we have. It's important to bring awareness because awareness uh, for what we're connected to brings us confidence, right? Like you're more confident when you are aware of like what's actually happening. And that confidence brings just more of an openness to continue to partner with what God is doing in and through this church. It's not about keeping the lights on. It's about making a difference and making an impact. And so that's what we get a chance to do as we expand these partnerships and, and what we're doing into the community. And we're fighting the good fight. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. These warriors, come on, we fight the good fight. Last week, we talked about what the cause is, right? We've got a chief aim. We know what it is, the target from which I'm supposed to fight for. And today, uh, we're going to look at uh, really what will keep us from fighting for that cause. We're going to talk about what holds a warrior back from actually fighting. Let me share this with you uh, with a little illustration um, I know some of my best friends that are in the room, if they were to, to come to uh, my house, they would show up and it'd be pretty casual, right? Like think about the time that you go to your friend's house, like it's probably like your best friend, like you got any best friends in the room? Anybody have a best friend? Oh, okay, cool. We got a church of a couple of best friends. It's great. <laughs> but like if you're going to your friend's house, like you're probably not showing up in your church clothes, right? Like not saying you dressed up today. Well, maybe you did, but like you're probably just kind of showing up real casual, right? Now, if you were going to their house for the first time, you might be wearing your church clothes. You might have those, the nice jeans on, you know what I mean? Like you might, oh yeah, I'm gonna put a fresh pair of socks on before I walk in or like whatever, <laughs> whatever it may, may be. But after the first time, maybe the second, the third, fourth, fifth, the 20th time, come on, you're showing up in sweatpants, a hoodie, you brought your own house shoes, like you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Like my friends, when they show up at my house, they don't wear that stuff because it's cold. They wear it because they're comfortable, right? Right? Because we're comfortable with those that we bring close to us, right? Like I don't, they know if I'm showing up, like this is probably what I'm, this is just me. You see me on a Tuesday, I might wear this exact same thing. I wore the same thing last night. I'm just saying. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just we're, we're comfortable, right? We're comfortable. I'm going to title today's conversation is this, stop wearing sweatpants. <laughs> and all the middle school moms just said a good amen, right? <laughs> Please, they're finally talking. Stop wearing sweatpants. Why would you wear sweatpants to your friend's house? Because you're comfortable. Because you're comfortable. And my fear is, is that as a church, as a body, as believers, individuals, the thing that is holding us back in life, we're just wearing sweatpants with. We're cozied up and comfortable. We maybe not even re recognize that it's there. What are you talking about? Listen, we, are, we talked about this last week. This is not a playground. This is a battleground. We got to fight to fight. We've got a mission to accomplish. And sometimes, maybe more often than not, we're just comfortable. Not really wanting to go do what it is that I've been called to do. Do I really need to fight the good fight? I'm wearing my my sweats. I'm so comfortable. I call them sweats, not even sweatpants. I'm just, I'm just comfy. 
But Paul tells us there's a battle going on for our souls. So we're in 2 Corinthians today, chapter 10. You'll get there in just a second. But Paul writes this letter to the Corinthians about the battle that is going on within. And here's the charge for us, that the battle that we believe that we're facing, that we see maybe even in front of us, is nowhere near to the deeper battle that's going on within us. And so therefore we may say like, yeah, I can, I can climb that wall, I can conquer that thing, but really what's actually holding you back, warrior, is the thing that is within. And if we win the war within, come on somebody, we can win the war anywhere of what's holding us back can stop us from the fight. So what do we got to do? Stop wearing sweatpants. Come on. Some of you are wearing sweatpants right now. <laughs> Keep them on for today. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Second Corinthians chapter 10, Paul encourages us this. He says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down what? Strongholds. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So we need to continuously be reminded that we, as followers of Jesus, are in a war. And we really do have an enemy and the enemy really wants to keep us trapped and tangled up in these strongholds. So today we're going to talk about pulling down the strongholds that are within us. What is a stronghold? Well, according to the scripture, it's these arguments or opinions, these thoughts that go against the knowledge of God. And they would lead you and me away from following Jesus. That's what these strongholds are. We need to recognize we've got an enemy who loves strongholds, and he can't wait to place the next one. And he's just waiting and looking and seeking. In fact, 1 Peter 5, 8 says this, be alert and of sober mind. Hey, that's a charge for us today, to be alert and have a sober mind because our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You need to know that when the enemy shows up, he's not looking for anything else than to devour, to take hold, to slow you down. He wants you to keep wearing sweatpants around the things that God wants you to fight against. But the issue is we become so comfortable. Listen, the devil is most dangerous when you don't know that he's there. When you've just become so comfortable, so complacent of the thing, so just, oh, we're good. That's not really an issue, but that's the thing that is holding you back. So, so you might be asking, really, you're probably asking for a friend because you don't have a stronghold online. You don't have a stronghold. I don't have, this is for somebody else. What would a stronghold look like? What would that actually be? Insecurity? Fear? Moodiness? You just got, you're just angry all the time. You're letting your emotions consume you and not living through them, it's a stronghold. You wanna numb the pain through anything you possibly can because you couldn't possibly face the thing and so you just wanna numb it with whatever bottle, with whatever pill, with whatever it may be. It's a stronghold. Pride, it's probably one of the biggest ones because you're so untouchable, unteachable that when somebody, a great man or woman of God, somebody you're close with says, hey, this thing, I'm pointing it out, and you're like, nope, that's not me. So when somebody's trying to help you, you think they're trying to hurt you, and so you reject it all. It's a stronghold. It's built up within. What about resentment? Jealousy. Lust. This victim mentality. Everybody's against me. Am I going too far? It's getting a little quiet this morning. You're just undependable. Your own family can't even count on you. Your dog can't even count on you. You're undependable. Maybe you just love retail therapy and you, you aren't a good steward of anything. So you're just buy, 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 buy it all because it's going to fill the gap. It's a stronghold. You're not a good steward. Maybe it's an addiction or substance abuse. It's gambling. 
If I just scratch the ticket one more time, how, how many one more times have you scratched? If I just put the number out that maybe you're a relationship junkie, one to the next, to the next, to the next, this thing, that thing, whatever it may be. Just trying to seek the, the rush of life, and then when that doesn't hit, you move on to the next thing. These are strongholds. Each of these things, whatever it is for you or the multiple, is the devil who is entrenching you to believe that that is the lie of just who you are. God wants to break something down in you. So the question this morning is not if you have a stronghold. The question is, where are you wearing sweatpants around what God wants you to fight against? What are you so comfortable living with that God wants you to fight against? Listen, you will never experience all that life holds when you are living your life with a stronghold. This thing built up, rooted inside of you. And you need to know today that the devil is dying to rob you of what Jesus died to give you. Life and life to the fullest. John 10.10 says that the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and life to the full. Check that out. The thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He has no other agenda than to remove this life and life to the fullest from you. So if you are a child of God, you are created in the image of God, your life was paid for on the cross, and you believe in Jesus, and so your eternity is set free, he may not be able to take his life or your life from you, but you may be living with something that the enemy wants you to hold on to, so you have no option to live the abundant life the life and life to the fullest. He wants you just to live in this. Well, that's just who I am. And what's unfortunate is that the enemy is so crafty that sometimes for most of us, it's just this death by a thousand cuts, slowly but surely knocking away, just wanting you to settle and not be able to experience the fullness of Jesus and what Jesus would want for both you and me, like in us as a community. But today I believe that our charge is not only to be alert and have a sober mind, but to be renewed. Romans Romans tells us to be renewed and it will transform our lives. We have to have a renewed mind to begin to shape and to mold us that we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. So warriors need to be ready for battle. And so here's our, our plan for today. We need to recognize just a few things. Recognize this. The first one is that our fight is an inside job. All the things I'm talking about is not about what's coming at you. It's what's coming within you. Our fight is with an inside job job. It's an inside job. So the little thoughts you have of doubt, the little thoughts that you have of anger, the little thoughts you have of resentment, the little thoughts you have of just this critical spirit, whatever it may be, all that is, hear me, is the devil just trying to bait you with a little bit of something. Is worry going to work today? Oh, no, not today. Oh, how about comparison? Oh, a little bit of comparison? Oh, no, how about a little bit of, oh, yeah, let's make them real jealous today. Let's make them feel like they don't have enough. Let's do this, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. And every single time that you have one of those thoughts come into your mind, you have two options, feed it or fight it. And when you don't do anything about it, you begin to feed it. Oh, now I'm believing the lie that I'm not good enough. I'm believing the lie that I don't have enough. I am believing the lie that, no, 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 you can fight it. But our fight is an inside job. 2 Corinthians 10, 5, as we read, it says, cast down the arguments and every high thing that's exalting itself against the knowledge of God. It doesn't mean just set it down nicely. It means get rid of the thought as quick as you possibly can. So when doubt becomes into your life, get rid of that doubt as fast as you possibly can. Get rid of it. Toss it out. Say, no, you can't have me anymore. I'm done. No more anger in this place. Oh, that lustful thought. I see you and now you are gone. Cast it down. Verse five also says, bring every thought into captivity 
to the obedience of Christ. Some of us need to put our thoughts into detention and teach them and say, wait a second, you hold on for just a moment and you begin to filter everything through scripture and you say, wait a second, is that true of what God says about me? And maybe if you don't know that, that's okay. Have a small group or some people that you can be accountable to. You can text, you can call and say, hey, this just came to my mind. Is this true? And they can say yes or no. But you, can't, you say, no, no, you're not going to be obedient. I'm not being obedient to you, thought. You're going to be obedient to my God, my Lord and Savior. That's who's running my life. Teach it to be obedient to Christ. And we filter everything through Scripture. Listen, this is an inside job. What will hold you back is not what's in front of you. It is what is within you. And the devil's just going to try to keep poking away. What's going to work today? It's like a woodpecker finding, knock, 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 finding the weakest spot and then going to town on it. So if it wasn't worry today, it might be worry tomorrow. He'll try again. Doubt today? Nope. It's going to be doubt tomorrow. He'll try again and just keep knocking. And our weakest spots are going to be within our mind. We need to have our minds renewed so we can be transformed. We need to recognize that our fight as warriors, it's an inside Job. The second thing that we can do today is prevent it now so we can dominate it later. Prevent now to dominate later. Listen, the strongholds that we've talked about, those things that are in our lives, you don't have to demolish it later if you don't build it today. If you don't feed it now, guess what doesn't have to be destroyed later? I can do some things. Oh, come on. Curing things is great. Oh, but prevention is much better. Prevention is better. We all know that every single one of us are sitting in in our lives today based off of the actions that we took previously. Like our lives reflect the discipline or lack thereof of our past. And so what we can do is prevent things now so we can dominate life Later, Like for me, when I turn 40 in a few years, like if I don't want to be lumpy, why was that funny? If I don't, talk to him, if I don't want to be lumpy and soft, guess what? I better have some discipline in my life now to go to the gym, to eat right, to put the candy down, like whatever it may be. Now, it's not a guarantee. Like I might do all the right things now, and I might still come up against some lumpiness later. Oh, but, but if I can do something now, why would I not try to prevent it? In fact, Proverbs tells us this, says, says in Proverbs 27, 12 says, the prudent, meaning those who care for, I have thoughts of the future, they see the danger and they take refuge. But the simple keep going. And they pay the penalty. I don't know about you, but I want to pay the penalty. I want to see what's ahead. And maybe I don't have vision for it, but I got a friend who can say, hey, Will, if you keep going down that path, something is going to change. And you are not going to like the outcome of it. And so they can speak into my life and help redirect me towards Christ. Right? Are you with me? Like, there's a difference there. So some of the strongholds that you and I are up against... We've been able to see him for so long, we've just been wearing sweatpants. So comfortable, so ca- just casual. Oh, it's probably not that bad. Well, guess what? Not that bad is still a version of bad. It's not good. So we need to be prepared now. What I'm trying to tell you is that we don't need to entertain the things for the sake of, it's just a little fun. We don't need to entertain things for, it's not gonna be that bad, is it? We don't need to entertain from just one more time. We've all got our one thing. Listen, if this was the edge of a building and just because we have a medical team doesn't mean that I can walk to the very edge and you know what, I should play around and say, ooh, check this out. Oh yeah, I do deep squats, come on somebody. And I, you know what I mean? Like on one leg, right? Because I can do that, that's fantastic. But just because we have a medical team that could fix my broken leg or whatever it may be does not mean I should still flirt with the ending. Can I tell you, just because it doesn't seem that bad or you've got some other resources, don't flirt for the things that God went to the cross for. Why would I get so close to the edge when I could say, wait a second, no, I'm going to get as close to God. Prevent it now to dominate 
later. This is a war. This is a fight. This is a a battle. Romans tells us to clothe ourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Don't even think, ooh, could that feel good if I went out of my marriage? Could that be great if I just went to the casino and tried it one more time? Could that be great if I grabbed another beer or another whatever it may be? Could it be great? Why would you even think about how to desire to gratify the desires of the flesh when your flesh is a liar? Don't even think about it. Listen, we don't have to demolish the strongholds that we don't let be built. This is a war. This is what Paul is talking about. He's saying this is a battle that's going on for your soul. And we're also reminded to put on the full armor of God. I don't want just one piece. I want the whole thing. Cover me, Lord Jesus. Like, that's what I, I need. Last thing we need to recognize today is this, is don't bring a knife to a gunfight. I didn't say don't bring a gun to a knife fight, <laughs> but don't bring a knife to a gunfight. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for what? Pulling down the strongholds. Our weapons are not carnal. They're not of this world. No, they're mighty in God. The weapons of this world would say, hey, comparison comes in. Well, why don't you just grab that credit card? Why don't you just swipe it and just go on that vacation? Why don't you take those selfies every morning? at the sun just at the right time and you took 50 of them. Like, why don't you just go out and do that thing? Why don't you go about buy that new thing? The weapons of the world are trying to flaunt your fame, your fortune, your success, and try to get all the knowledge maybe. I'm gonna go back to college just so I can get a couple of letters after my name or whatever it may be. Try to puff yourself up in knowledge. That's the weapons of the world, but not ours. It says they're mighty in God for pulling down the stronghold. Listen, we've got the greatest weapon of all time. It's the God of the universe, the one who was and is and is to come. He is the alpha. He's the omega. And so we fight with that. And I'm reminded of David against Goliath. He wasn't fighting Goliath. No, he was fighting the fear of all the Israelite people that were just afraid to step out into the battle. And David was the only one who said, you know what? It's not this pebble. It's not this slingshot. No, no. It is my God who will protect me. Got him. It is Joshua, right? All the Israelites have been wandering in the desert because they were disobedient to God. They weren't living their lives for him. And it was Joshua who said, hey, or God said to Joshua, be strong and be courageous. I am with you always, just like I was with Moses. So go, Joshua, and take the land. Same people, but Joshua was just like, let's go. I'm going to fight the fear. There's no more worry here. We're going to go for it. He knows that the, the weapon that he had wasn't his army. His weapon was the Lord. So we have to fight differently. Let me ask you this. Why would you rely on your own power when you've been given God's power? Why would you try on your own strength to to stop looking at pornography? Why would you try on your own strength to to put the bottle down? You're just swinging a knife at a gunfight. You've probably tried time and 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 time again, and you're probably tired and you're weary, but God is saying, hey, stop relying on your own strength and rely on mine. Rely on me. This is how we fight. It's an inside job. And we can do some things right here and right now so that we can dominate in life later. But we have to recognize where our power, where our weapon is from. It is not the weapons of the world. That's not the new clothing piece. No, it is the armor of God that we can fight with. And now listen, I never want to lead us to a point where we're just like, hey, here's your problems. There's the door, good luck because that's not helpful. That's not helpful. I, I wanna always be able to point to the thing that we need to deal with, but then also give us the tools. I may not give you the solution, but I can give you a tool to put into your armor to fight. Warriors fighting the good fight. Here's our tool. Would you stand with me this morning? And just in this moment, 
Listen, you may not look like you're doing battle right now, but can I tell you, there's a war going on for your soul and there's a battle going on even where you're standing right here right now. We fight through worship. We th- fight through prayer. We fight with, with God's word. We be renewed by the transforming of our minds. Recognize right here, right now, church, there's a battle going on. And so our tool to fight today is God. In fact, would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? Just in this moment, no no notebooks, no Bibles around. We're not going after your head right now. We're going after your heart. God wants to do something inside of you today. He wants to break something inside of you. The thing that's holding you back, whatever it may be, God wants to break that saying, hey, stop wearing sweatpants. Put on the armor of God and fight it. And so right now in this moment, here's how we fight. Here's how we battle. In prayer, we ask the Holy Spirit. We believe that God is a speaking God and he uses his spirit to speak to us and reveal things to us. And so right here, right now, wherever you are in this room, it's a moment with you and God. If you're online, it's a moment with you and God. I don't know what else is going on in your home, but have a moment with you and God and ask this question, Holy Spirit, what is my stronghold? Whatever it is that he's bringing up to you right here, right now, that is your stronghold. Maybe you had a different idea, but you just said, Holy Spirit, what is the stronghold? And right now, I need you to lay claim and refuse to be held down by it. So Holy Spirit, what is my stronghold? Is it lust? Is it anger? Is it comparison? Is it an addiction? I refuse to be held down by those things. And right here, right now, you can say, Holy Spirit, what is the truth that you need me to hear? What is the truth? Let him just speak and reveal to you today. In this moment, you've you've now named it. You know what you're up against. But you've also refused it. You've said, you can have no hold on me. And now you have a new truth over your life. And so the only action you need to continuously do now is to keep turning to the Lord. The Bible says as we turn to the Lord, he removes the things in our lives. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I need you to know today that there is freedom in the place. There's freedom in this place today. And maybe as we have been in this moment of prayer, For those of you in the room, the Holy Spirit is saying, you, the thing that you are holding on to, your stronghold is your life. And you need to lay it down and say yes to Jesus, to finally come into that right relationship with him. And if that's you, you just say, yes, Jesus, I want you. Would you break, would you allow me to let go of my life, not to pick it back up in the future, but to remove it? I wanna live for you. Would you make me new today? So Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, God, for who you are and what you've done. Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your truth. God, thank you for breaking down the barriers and the walls that are in our lives. Father, we thank you for removing it. And we turn to you today to experience your true freedom. And it's in Jesus' name we pray.